Welcome, my name is Tim, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to troubleshoot a faulty overload heater on the commercial air conditioning simulator. Now, just a brief description of what we call these pilot duty overloads. There's one on each hot leg of the compressor, and they're comprised of two parts. They have a heater that's in series to each winding of the compressor across these red connections, and in close proximity to those are three normally closed switches that are not connected to the heaters but are in close proximity. So if the compressor draws high current, the heater will heat up and trip its corresponding bimetal switch. Let's take a look at the diagram for a second. We can see the three overloads right here in series to the contactor. And again, these would be influenced by the temperature of those heaters, which in turn are influenced by the current draw on each leg. Now, we're going to start by going to the thermostat and turning it to call for cooling. So once at the thermostat, click the selector switch. This will turn it to the cool position and it'll also turn down the temperature setting. So it won't be necessary to use the arrows here. Click OK on the procedure guide at the top. And we're gonna assess which electrical loads are operational. And we can see here that our indoor fan is running. So we're gonna click yes. But when we get to the outdoor unit, we see that our outdoor fan motor or our condenser fan motor here in the top is not running. So on our menu up here, we're going to say it's off. It's not cycling on and off. It's not on. It's off. Next, we need to investigate the compressor. We're going to open the control panel, click yes or OK on the procedure guide, and we're going to measure the current draw of the compressor. We're just going to clip the jaws around one of these wires. And we want to determine if the compressor is cycling on and off or if it's just off. And in this case, we have a steady zero amps, which indicates that the compressor is off. So it's not cycling. Now, what could cause this? Well, there's a whole lot of things that would turn these two motors off. But let's take a look at the diagram again. Our contactor coil could be the fault here. It's possible without this coil intact that the contacts do not close and it doesn't turn on the condenser fan motor and the compressor. But it's also possible that any of these preceding switches, these safety switches here, the three overloads, the internal thermostat, the low pressure and high pressure cutout, as well as the thermostat, could be open, breaking power to that contactor coil. So we're going to investigate each of those. We're going to start by measuring at the contactor coil. That seems to be the most logical place here. And when we do that, we can see we have zero volts at the contactor coil, which means the contactor's not our fault here. We've got something open in series to it, meaning one of those safety switches or possibly the thermostat is open. So we're going to click no on the procedure guide that we've measured zero volts now. And we're going to leave our black lead right on the blue connection, and we're going to do what they call hopscotch troubleshooting. Our next step is to take the red lead and place it at this yellow wire nut here on the glowing orange hotspot. This is going to verify power out of the thermostat, and we do, in fact, have 24 volts here. Now, again, let's take a look at the wiring diagram. You can see the placement of our leads. Our red lead is actually placed on the line feed to the low-pressure cutout coming out of the thermostat. So, again, we verified the thermostat contacts are closed. Our next step after clicking yes on the procedure guide is to check for power coming out of the high pressure cutout. And we can do this right at the blue wire nut here. And we have 24 volts, so we're going to click yes, and our high pressure cutout checks out. Now to check the low pressure cutout, we're going to need to remove the terminal box cover, and we're going to have to check it at the line input to the internal thermostat. So I'm going to slide my meter lead out of the way, and I'm going to place my red lead over here on the line connection of the internal thermostat. And we have 24 volts. Again, this verifies that our low pressure cutout is closed. So again, if you wanna look at the wiring diagram, we can see again our meter lead placement here coming out of the low and high pressure cutouts, we have voltage. So now we're down to the internal thermostat as well as the overloads. Now, after clicking yes on the procedure guide, we're gonna move that lead to the other side of the internal thermostat and make sure we have power coming out of that. And in fact, we do. So our internal thermostat checks out. We had power in, we've got power out. We can click yes. Now next, we're gonna check power going to the overload switches that are in the low voltage circuit. So we're gonna place it at the top here and we have 24 volts and this is just verifying we don't have a loose connection somewhere. And we do in fact have 24, so no loose connections. Now we need to check power out of those overloads and we can do this right at the bottom. And when we do this, we've got zero volts. Now what this verifies is that one of these overloads is open. Um, 
Now, usually when an external pilot duty overload opens, it's due to what they call a single phasing condition where you've lost a main leg of power to the compressor. Now, this could be a blown fuse in the disconnect. It could be uh, a faulty set of contacts in the contactor. It's possible one of the heaters is open in the overload, or it's possible we have an open motor winding within the compressor. But something's taking out a full leg of power, leaving only single phase power. And the compressor's not going to be able to start on single phase power. However, it will draw a locked rotor amperage, which will cause a considerable increase in temperature within the heaters, causing one of these overloads to trip. And that appears to be what happened here. So now that we click no, that we didn't measure for 24 volts, we measured zero. Our next step is to measure for power coming into the contactor at each phase. So we're going to go L1 to L2 first. And when we do that, we've got 240 volts, so we can click yes. Next, we're going to go to L1 and L3, and we have 240 there, so we click yes. And last but not least, L1 to L2, and we have 240 there. So pretty much at this point, we have power coming into the contactor, I meaning it's not a blown fuse. Now, it's a little more invasive to check the contactor, so what we're going to do here, after clicking yes that we measured 240, we're going to turn the power off and we're going to do some resistance checks of the heaters and possibly the motor windings first. So click OK after you've turned the power off, and we'll start by measuring resistance of each of these heaters. Now starting with heater number one at the top. Now when we measure resistance of the heaters, they should read about a half an ohm or so, um, and when we place the leads across the heater, we measure OL, or infinite resistance, on the meter, and this verifies that this particular heater on the top is open, and this is going to break line one going to the compressor, and again, it's going to try to start on the other two legs with single phase power. It's going to draw locked rotor amperage, heat up the other heaters, and trip one of the overloads, which is going to break power to the contactor coil. So we obviously have a heater problem here. We're going to need to replace the overload. We're going to click on it and click Replace. And this is going to solve our problem. We can see we go to zero ohms now once we've fixed the problem. Now, our next step is to turn the power back on and close up the unit. Now, when we do this, we're going to want to watch one full cycle of operation to make sure all loads are operating properly and maybe replace the filter if necessary for a little added value. Click OK, and last but not least, we want to go to the space to verify that cool air is being delivered, and we can see from the graphic in this ceiling register that we are, in fact, delivering cool air to the space. Now, if you need to review any of the steps in this process, simply click this top left icon, and you can review each of these steps in the procedure. Good luck on all your future service calls, and I'll see you back here soon. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel. Watching videos is great but nothing beats actually doing. Head over to interplaylearning.com to try these sims for yourself in 3D and virtual reality with a free trial.